All right, and welcome inside to Can You Dig Sports Radio and the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett. Uh, some some interesting times. The Yanks are back in the playoff race. That's some good stuff. But I, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. You got to hear what Stephen A. Smith on ESPN had to say uh, recently and had to clarify on Twitter. Kyrie could have ended up in Philly. Sean Marks couldn't do that because KD wasn't having it. KD wasn't having mm-hmm. it. KD, like, Kyrie Irving ain't going no damn place. Mm-hmm. Cause let me tell you something right now. Philadelphia might have said no, but I assure you, I assure you, if it were not for Kevin Durant, the Brooklyn Nets would be interested in making that deal. Because let's call it what it is. Kendra Brookers, I'll say it right here on national television. If Ben Simmons was in Brooklyn with KD and James Harden, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. They win in the chip. I still think they win in the chip anyway. But they damn sure win the chip. Even without Kyrie, if you got James Harden, KD, and Ben Simmons, because you got somebody that would uh, as an elite defender. But they're going to win with Kyrie, too, because we know Kyrie's all world. But Brooklyn would do that if KD would let him. KD ain't having that. Of course he's not. Of course he's not. In fact, I don't even know where this rank came from. But the idea that Ben Simmons, James Harden, and KD would be more effective than a healthy Kyrie, healthy Harden, healthy KD. Of course, we all know why he does this. It's to draw attention to himself. And, uh, and he loves that. So he makes these outlandish claims. Now, there is some talent with Ben Simmons. However, can someone explain to me why in a tie game they go to him to make free throws? Because he doesn't connect. He misses quite often. So if you're going to bring on a guy that might be great, but down the stretch uh, when he gets fouled, gets fouled in a tie game simply to miss, that's a problem. And I think there's a cultural problem with him too. When you have Doc Rivers and Joel Embiid saying, well, you know, we don't really want him here. That's in essence what he was talking, what they were saying after their exit from last year's playoffs. You have to believe that this guy may not just be a bad free throw shooter. There might be some culture issues in the locker room with him. Why would the Nets want to do that? Why would KD want to do that? But, you know, I normally don't dive dive into all of these commentators and analysts, but this one, when I saw it trending on Twitter, I had to jump in. Because this is out of New York City, watching that Nets series, going to Game 2 against the Bucks. Uh, in a series that they were almost going to run away with, except Joe Harris went missing, except Kyrie gets hurt uh, in Milwaukee after a gritty performance uh, in that 125-point Nets, you know, route. I mean, they scored 125 points that night against the Bucs in Game 2. Then everybody just kind of disappeared, even KD to an extent, except for Game 5. And, of course, Game 7 where his foot was on the line, which I know he's hungry probably to um, to do something about and, and, and correct that next year. But I don't know. It, it bothers me that some of these commentators, Stephen A. Smith, thinks the average watcher of sports is stupid or something. I don't know. He thinks we're some sort of like so hardcore we don't even know our basketball. Now, I may not know it, as much as the next guy that comes on Kenny Dig Sports Radio or the next or the guys after me or the guys before me. Point being is that this is nonsense. Can yeah, this is nonsense. Listen again. Kyrie could have ended up in Philly. Sean Marks couldn't do that because KD wasn't having it. KD wasn't having mm-hmm. it. KD like Kyrie Irving ain't going no damn place. Mm-hmm. Cause let me tell you something right now. Philadelphia might have said no. But I assure you, I assure you, if it were not for Kevin Durant, the Brooklyn Nets would be interested in making that deal. Because let's call it what it is. Kendra Brookers, I'll say it right here on national television. If Ben Simmons was in Brooklyn with KD and James Harden, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. They win in the chip. I still think they win in the chip anyway. But they damn sure win the chip. Even without Kyrie, if you got James Harden, KD, and Ben Simmons, because you got somebody that would uh, as an elite defender. But they're going to win with Kyrie, too, because we know Kyrie's all world. But Brooklyn would do that if KD would let him. KD ain't having it. In fact, uh, one of our guys, Jaleel Lewis, uh, Real Leal, uh, commented when I wrote 
in our big chat, uh, he would make that deal. Now, I'm not sure if he's trying to goat me into debating here, but let me tell you, I would not make that deal. And I welcome Leal to come on and discuss why I wouldn't uh, do it. Why I would not do it. And part of that is because the, um, th- the free throw issue. He might be a great defender, but I don't trust him at the line. He might be a great defender. He might be elite. But he will not win the ring if he cannot make the fouls. He will not win the ring if he cannot make the foul foul throws, free throws. And so, what do you guys think? Alex at AlexGNYC.com. Alex at AlexGNYC.com. Do you think that this team would be better with or without Kyrie and with Ben Simmons? Or is Kyrie the key for this team? Is this statement by Stephen A. Smith correct? If Ben Simmons was in Brooklyn with KD and James Harden, it's a wrap. A wrap. It's a wrap. I would think a wrap would be having Kyrie, Harris, Harden, uh, uh, Kyrie and KD all on the floor. And maybe Claxton as well. But I don't think Ben Simmons is the answer, Stephen A. Smith. But what got to me more is then he tried to correct it. Did you see this on Twitter at Stephen A. Smith? He said today, I never said any trade offers were made. What I said is they would do a deal for Ky- to swap Kyrie for Ben Simmons in a heartbeat. But KD Trey 5 ain't having it. He loves his brother Kyrie. Now that's true. K- I don't remember in that sound clip Stephen A. Smith saying a deal was made. But he brought up the possibility. And what I'm what I'm more curious about is where his mindset is thinking of that. Is it because Ben Simmons did say he's not happy and may not ever play for the Sixers again? Is that where this is coming from? Is it because he wants to be traded? Is it because the Sixers don't want him? What what brought him to say this? Is it because it is national television he wants to say this? And that's all? That's why talking heads don't really vibe. I don't I don't vibe with that. I vibe with real people and real talent and real announcers and people who aren't trying to just be a big loudmouth on television, but actual real uh, thinkers in sports. Like those on Can You Dig Sports Radio and elsewhere. So what do you guys think? Is this legitimate? Is this idea a legitimate idea? Or Stephen A. Smith just trying to drum up attention? I think it's the latter. And I think that's why places like Can You Dig Sports Radio and Sports Hour exist. Because we talk less obloviation and more actuality. More reality to things. The idea that the Nets would trade for Simmons. I think the Nets are smarter than that. I really do. I really do. Now, I can go into defensive stats of Ben Simmons, and maybe I should do that. Maybe next segment, during the break, I'll research and go into the defensive seg- uh, defensive stats for, for him. Because maybe I'm talking out of my ass. You know, out of my ass. Maybe I'm talking out of it. Maybe I don't know enough to be commenting on this. But when you watch a team foul Ben Simmons to get him to the line in a tie to make him miss and get the ball back because they know they can, that's problem number one. The defense could be great, could be stellar, could be elite. But if they can't make the clutch throws down the stretch there's a problem with that there's a problem with that but you know what I'm going to take it upon myself to do some research during the break get you some stats on Ben Simmons and report back to you 
And then we'll figure out if Stephen A or is in the right or or those who want Ben Simmons, uh, those who don't want Ben Simmons on the Nets are in the right. We'll find that out. The stats will tell all. And so that's going to be my next segment. Stay with us here on Can You Dig Sports and the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett. It's a busy day. I want to talk about Cleveland next hour because we've got some pretty heavy stuff going on in by the shores of Lake Erie, both in football and baseball. You don't want to miss that conversation. And then uh, I, I want to get emails. I want to talk to you. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear even direct message me during this segment. And maybe I'll, I'll put... Put it on the air. But I want to hear from you right now. Is Ben Simmons the answer to the Nets' troubles? Or not? Is Stephen A. Smith right? Or is he completely off the wall like he sometimes is? Your take, Net. Your take is always welcome at alex at alexgnyc.com. Enjoy some music and some spots. We'll be right back after these messages on Can You Dig Sports Radio. If Ben Simmons was in Brooklyn with KD and James Harden, it's a wrap. Well, is he right on this? Is he right? Is Stephen A. Smith right on that comment? I did some research, as promised, during the break. And some interesting thoughts did come up out of that research. According to FoxSports.com, Simmons had a 106.1 defensive rating, which was tied for fourth in the NBA. And... He had 3.3 defensive win shares, finished fifth in steals, and had a 107.4 defensive rating. Well, it was part of the Sixers' 107.4 defensive rating. That would be second best in the NBA last year. Now you go to the whole generic stat pack, Here's where I think the Nets did slip up a little bit. I mean, you don't blow a two nothing lead if you can't if you have a great defense. That's just my thought on it. And you know, I, I don't like to make jokes like this, but I can't go without saying every time KD got up defensively, I was worried he was going to come down and need life alert. Okay, every time he went up to try and play defense, which was looking a little tough sometimes. I thought he needed life alert. Am I wrong for saying that? Is that offensive to someone? Sorry if it is. But here's the deal. The dealio is that Kyrie Irving and the Nets did have some defensive flaws last year. There's no doubt about it. And looking at these stats, I'm kind of reminded of that. It does take defense to win a championship, does it not? And these stars are great offensively, but how quickly do they get up the floor and block and steal? Well, a little bit less than the Sixers. 9.1 steals a game average for the Sixers. 6.7 for the Nets. Blocks-wise, 5.3 for the Nets, 6.2 a game. Rebounding, you know, always a defensive rebounding, how they do there. Actually, they were fairly even. 35.0 for the Sixers, 35.5 for the Nets. 72.6 defensive rebound percentage. 73.7 defensive rebound percentage for the Sixers. 72.6 for the Nets. In the paint, Nets gave up. 47.8 points, uh, 0.8 tenths points a game. Sixers only gave up 48. Sixers gave up 46. But the idea that we could just forget about the stretch that someone performs in doesn't make sense to me. We could have 25,000 blocks a game and win the championship, sure. 
But you can't win a championship if you don't make your free throws, Stephen A. Smith. You can't win a championship if you don't make your free throws. And that is where Ben Simmons is a liability 100%. And so, yes, defensively, the Nets are not stacked. They really are not. But I I don't know. I think Steve Nash has done a phenomenal job balancing out. So Tim, uh, Tim, uh, Tom Thibodeau, one coach of the year for the Knicks, I believe. I thought that deserving went to Nash. Because, yeah, the Knicks are in disarray and all that. But Steve Nash was able to have a phenomenal season in his first year. With on and off... Appearances by Harden, Durant, and Kyrie. They were not always on the floor. I think they played at least just eight games together sometime at one point. Yet, they had a stack bench that made up for that. Whenever one was down, the others would come up for them. Now, now you're saying, get rid of Kyrie... And put in Ben Simmons? <laughs> How does this make sense, Stephen A. Smith? Defensively, Steve Nash can fix this with the guys he has. And they can they are offensively skilled. They they do have to shore up the defense. Yes, they do. But but they don't need to get rid of Kyrie Irving. They should not get rid of Kyrie Irving. And for only the fact that the culture around Ben Simmons seemed toxic. You could say Kyrie was toxic for stepping on the Celtics logo. But to be honest, I don't see that. I see your teammates not supporting you. And your coach not supporting you. As meaning you're toxic to the culture of an organization of any sports team. Of any sports team. You look at um, toxicity. The Cubs. Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo. Left toxic. The toxic Cubs organization by trade. And they are now in playoff position. You could say maybe the Phillies. uh, The Phillies. (laughs) wrong, Wrong team in Philadelphia. The Sixers culture is awful. And that's why Ben Simmons couldn't perform. But when you're asking the guy to take the team on your shoulders at the foul line, and he completely misses, and then you get your coach and your star Joel Embiid saying things about you, it might be you that's the problem. So we can go through stat packs, we can go through comparisons, we can go through this at all you want. But here's the bottom line. The prospect that Stephen A. Smith says so proudly that if they get Ben Simmons, it's a wrap. It's not a wrap. It's a liability. Way more than a healthy Kyrie. Let me say that again. It's a liability way more than a healthy Kyrie. But we will see where Ben Simmons goes. It's funny. Two days ago, I was thinking to myself, man, there's not much NBA news. All of a sudden, this comes up. All of a sudden, the Simmons situation is bubbling. Uh, The Timberwolves firing their coach, which shocked uh, Carl Anthony Thomas. And uh, I don't know where the Wolves go from here. But uh, in New York, you don't really care about Minnesota because they're not one to be cared for. In New York City. Timberwolves. Who are they? Basically is how we feel. Meanwhile. Meanwhile. In this city that never sleeps. Kevin Durant still wonders if he steps on the two. On the three line. Or he was beyond the three line. In the city that never sleeps. Kyrie Irving is going to get healthier. In the city that never sleeps. Julius Randle will help the Knicks. A healthy Derrick Rose would be phenomenal for the Knicks, wouldn't he? 
Just like a healthy Kyrie would be phenomenal for the Nets. But don't bring Ben Simmons into the sports town. Do not. In any capacity. I don't care which team it is. Don't bring him here. I don't think he's good for the locker room. I don't think he's good for the free throws. I just don't see him as a full-on guarantee. And we only do guarantees in New York City, don't we? At least I thought we did. At least I thought this sports town was full of people that make guarantees. Like Mark Messier made the guarantee they were going to win Game 7. And they won Game 7 in 1994. That's the kind of guarantee I'm talking about. A player that misses free throws is not a guarantee in my book. He could be an incredible defensive guy and the Nets need defense. Yes, they do. And these guys are a little older to get back on defense. Okay, that's true too. But, but they can make the throws down the stretch. They can do it. Joe Harris was absent, but we can forgive him for that. I think so. You can't forgive someone for missing a free throw in the pivotal situation of a game. Defense can win championships, but free throws, free throws win championships too. And you can leave a lot of points on the board by hitting the backboard instead of knocking them through. And uh, and I just pray that <laughs> that this sports town does not see Ben Simmons anywhere near the Barclays Center or Madison Square Garden. All right, next up, I want to talk about how the uh, talk about how the Cleveland Indians, Cleveland Browns are interconnected this weekend. How it's going to be a big weekend in Cleveland, as there are only two games out of that uh, playoffs. There are only a couple games behind the uh, White Sox, so this series matters. But even more so from a historical perspective, it matters. On the shores of Lake Erie. I'll tell you why next. On the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett and Alex Garrett Podcasting. Listen to us all day long, by the way, at Can You Dig Sports Radio. All day long. Don't miss it.